I got my pre-impeachment. We're jamming a lot in pre-impeachment. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, you guys could just ask questions because I don't right. have any opening statement or anything like that. I'm just um, yeah. Coach, just got tested. So we just got testing. Hoping Biodesic. I do want to say Biodesic. The people that do our testing have been unbelievable and awesome. And um, all of our frontline workers and, you know, all, all the stuff that's being done here for our student athletes. But Biodesic, the, the place has done an unbelievable job keeping us healthy. And I want to thank them after just being down there with them. Steve, I'm assuming you watched uh, Wisconsin and Michigan last night. What what did you think of that when you saw that game? Well, uh, you know, because I've watched so much Wisconsin tape, I, I know how good Wisconsin is. And, um, you know, just very impressive, obviously, win by Michigan. that They've been undefeated and um, did as good a job on both ends of the floor. But uh, Wisconsin's really good. And I think sometimes you have days like that. And my respect for the Wisconsin program is off the charts. But Michigan certainly... Uh, Played great on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, that's life life in the Big Ten. Steve, do you have an update on Cliff, and how's the health of the rest of your team? Um, yeah, th this is, break has been good. I mean, he's starting to do some drills with us and stuff, so I don't have any other update other than, you know, he's doing some stuff, which is a really good sign for us. Um, he hadn't practiced at all. Uh, and now he's out on the court and he's, he's doing certain drills and he's uh, certain, you know, time restraints that he's on. Uh, but it's uh, obviously really good to see him uh, back on the floor, moving around a little bit. And we'll see today if he can do some more contact and what have you. But uh, um, get him up and moving has been a really good thing, really good thing for us. We'll go to Fonseca and then Cratch. Uh, yeah, Steve, to bounce off that, how are, how are the rest of the guys doing just as far as, uh, you know, having the, the, the longer break, the getting the legs under them health-wise? And uh, this is the third 9 p.m. tip you guys play this season. Does that change anything as far as preparation, having a longer day? Just how does that kind of affect the, the game day uh, routine? Yeah, I mean, it just drags out the day. We get, you know, our testing early in the morning. So, um, you know, we seem to be playing at 12 or 9, you know, early or, or re really late. So... Um, and you don't really ever know those things. And they get changed all the time now, too, with the with the pauses and, and all the other things that happen. But, uh, um, you know, just makes for a later film night, too, for for everybody. But, uh, you know, those are the game times. And we're excited about playing on, on TV, you know, so you just deal with it. And, and the other players have been good, you know, health wise. The other players have been good. So knock on wood. Steve, we've made a lot about home court advantage or lack thereof with, with teams. I'm just curious, how do you think officiating has changed in an empty arena with no fans necessarily to react to how the calls they make and everything? I, 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 I definitely, um, you know, think that changes. I think, you know, um, momentum in games and, and the fans' reactions, you know, always factor into a little bit to that. You know, it's just been a different year, you know, with no fans and the energy that you got to bring um, yourself and your team. Um, you know, I do think the refs, they hear more too now, you know, like they, they hear more. Um, so they're listening to everybody in the past. They, you know, the, the noises were just drowned out. Um, you know, now they listen, they react. Um, we get more warnings. You know, we didn't, have those last they couldn't hear half the things they didn't know where half of it was coming from so i think it's been hard to you know for for the officials but i am thankful the officials they get tested every day they've done an unbelievable job sacrificing too um so their world has changed with no fans being around it's changed and i do think um you know the momentum of games and the swings of games you know have have, have changed too so we've all had to adjust to that it's a great question We'll go to Richie and then Chris Eisman. Hey, Steve. So I know um, Wisconsin's actually uh, one of the top three-point shooting teams in the country right now. I think they're ranked 10th in three-point percentage, and I think you guys rank on the opposite end, uh, 160th in defending the perimeter. Uh, how big of a threat is that for um, the Badgers? I mean, every team in our league brings a different, you know, problem. So, you know, 
some teams can really shoot at Iowa. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job, even the last game. I mean, they made some really some very difficult. I go through every game tape and I grade the shot attempts and how contested and how, um, you know, and, and you got to give the other team some credit, you know, when they make tough shots. So you do the best you can. Um, this team's average age is 24 years old. This is an old, experienced. Um, they're the Big Ten champs from last year. Um, they shoot the ball. They make free throws. They got great shooters, and they surround them with some good post players too. So they pose us many problems. And you know, guarding a three has been a problem. They shoot 42 percent, so they've they've made threes against all the teams in, you know in our league and that they played. Um, so you got to do an added emphasis. You got to make sure that your guys understand. They're closing out to five men. They even have their fives that really can shoot the ball. So you got to do a great job. You re you really do, and and, and you got to be alert on all your coverages, uh, in screen action. Um, so um, you know it's 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 really challenging. And then you got to do all that, and you can't foul Wisconsin with the elite elite foul shooters. I think Nate Roovers, their five man shoots ninety two percent from the foul line. You know right now, so. Um, you got to do a lot of good things, and 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 you got to play well when you're playing teams like this. Is it, Steve, when you uh, look at the way Jacob Young has played this year, I mean, what do you think has kind of allowed him to be as consistent as he has been, and to continue to play at this level all season long so far? Yeah, you know, I I, I just really uh, I think first he had a really good summer. He added a lot a lot of film work, um, too that that goes into it. Um, I think he's taken on a. a a defensive mindset too. He guards a lot of really good players. Um, he'll have Trice now too, one of the best guards in the country. Um, you know, he's accepted that. He practices, you know, more consistently. His game has been more, more consistent. And uh, and, and and playing against you know a lot of different obstacles. You know, every night. I think he stayed healthy too. I think that's been, you know, a key key for him. But his maturity has been it's been fun actually to watch and. And when I watch tapes from last year, you know, sometimes I bring them in and say, now look at you and this year and last year, you know, he, he's grown, but you have to be open to grow too. You have to be open to, you know, um, you know, the coaching and, and the film work and, and, and then you got to do the work to do it. So he's done all those things and it's shown in his improved play and, and, and really proud of him for that. We'll go to Aaron Brightman and then back to Jerry. Uh, Coach, you, you had some success at the end of last game with the full court pressure. Uh, it seemed to kind of uh, get the team a little more aggressive on the defensive end. How much do you take from that game in terms of moving forward, maybe uh, you know, with a little bit more rest, uh, having that more of uh, what you do defensively you know, throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it you know, depends on the opponent, too. And you know, Sometimes when you're more aggressive, we're fouling at a high, high rate in the games that we haven't been successful in. Um, you know, and it opens up the floor, too. So there's a lot of pros and cons um, when you do it. I'm, I'm looking forward someday to having my full allotment of, of, of players that are, you know, available for every game. That helps, too. Um, you know, these games are long. These games are tough. Uh, but we have that in our package. And, uh, you know, at times it could really help us. And then at other times it, it works against us. And, um, you know, but we're continuing to improve, and this break in the action gives us a chance to reset and really focus on, you know, some of those areas and be able to spend a little bit more time with that to have that as a weapon for us. We played some zone too. I thought that helped us. We didn't rebound, you know, well out of that either. So it helped us in some ways, but it still didn't cover up what we we got to do a great job of, and that's you know boxing out and rebounding, um, you know. So um, you know, all those things are options. All those things are on the table you know, for, for all these games and every team poses you different, different issues when, when you go to pressure or when you go to zones, um, and you got to weigh that too. Steve, how Steve. is, uh, where, where's Jaden, Jaden at Jones at in his quarantine? Is that over? Is he with you guys yet or where's that at? Yeah, no, he's still got to go through that and our testing. He's got to be in our testing for so long and, you know, he's just got registered for classes. So, Okay. Um, hopefully soon, um, but there's you know still there's a lot of obstacles and, and COVID brought more obstacles to getting a guy uh, ready and physicals and um, you know all the different things that come with that. So we're still we're still in the process. Okay, thanks. Got it. Go over to Richie. 
Coach, I don't know if you saw today, but Ron Harper was named the number 20 player in the nation by ESPN. Can you just talk a little bit about him? I know uh, we talk about him uh, almost every game now. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I didn't know that. And, you know, um, you know, Ron's come a long way. He, he really has. He's going to continue to to improve, um, you know, that they're rating him those things. I, you know, I try not to get caught up in, you know, any of that. Just keep trying to get better and have a great season and, Ron's certainly a guy that works on getting better and going to watch film a little bit later today. He can do many things for us, um, but we got to get you know him to play at a high level every game. And now he's like the first guy on the scouting report. So I think sometimes, you know, when you get those ratings, it it brings more attention and makes it harder for you, you know, to do the things that you were doing. So you got to keep improving on your game and you got to keep working harder. And you know, when you're that first name and those rankings go the first thing up on the board to other teams, you know, motivates other teams to do a great job in stopping him. So makes your life harder. Um, and he's got to keep growing through all those, you know, all those scouting reports that are that are loading up on him. I see just one more from Coach for, from Fonseca. Uh, Steve, you've talked about having to play without fouling a couple times this season. Uh, I guess just how do you strike that balance between playing? You you kind of broke off at the end, so I didn't hear it then. But you know, strike strike that balance between you know being aggressive and and, and not fouling. Um, you know, you you really have to spend time with it, and we've shown a lot of film to our guys about you know how we're getting fouls and 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 why we're getting fouls and. And and also we've shown a lot of film to to our guys about how to get fouled because we certainly one way to help us is to get the other team to foul us more. And so we want to incorporate some of the things that we're seeing, um, you know, throughout the league and, 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 and with, with us to get fouled more ourselves to try to even out those those numbers. But it's a real balancing act, too. And, and you never know from game to game sometime how, how the whistle is going to be blown. So, you know, we go, go into huddles now and we have reminders, hey, they're letting us play or, hey, they're calling this or, hey, they're calling that. You know, so there's a constant, um, you know, information grouping uh, of letting our players know how that game is, you know, being called that day. So. Um, there's some of that too. So it's a lot of work. I mean, I think we've, you know, gone through, you know, that we had 80 fouls in, in our four losses and every single one of them is, is charted and every single one is brought to the attention of our players. And we're, we're even now adding that to our, you know, practices, you know, we're counting fouls and we're, you know, trying to, you know, just make the guys more aware of, um, you know, there's good fouls and there's dead ball fouls. Then there's in-game fouls, you know, just the different ways too that you're fouling. Um, you, you, you know, and so um, I think it's very important. But yeah, there is that balancing act, being real aggressive and being over, you know, over aggressive and having it hurt you. And, and you're always walking that line, you know, and each and every game is different. Thanks, Coach. That's all the questions I've got today. Appreciate the time. Guys, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to be on the call today and stay healthy. All right.